Hi, seniors. Mr. Chocolis here with another Life After Hersey senior session. The topic of this session is tips for paying for and saving while in college. So we talk a lot about scholarships and doing the FAFSA and things like that before you get to college. But there are a lot of ways that while you're at college, you can try to save some money or not even spend money possibly um, and make sure that you're able to afford um, continuing on in college um, because there's going to be a lot of different costs maybe you weren't aware of. So we're going to talk about some of those costs and some of those tips for how you can um, make it through college uh, without going too broke. All right. So as mentioned, we're going to talk about some tips for paying for and saving money while in college. So a lot of the times when you look at the cost of college, you're looking at direct costs. What's the tuition and fees and room and board that you're going to pay to the school? That's a direct cost. But oftentimes students forget about the indirect costs, costs that they're going to have that uh, may um, go to other somewhere else. You're going to pay directly to a store or, or some other thing. So um, there are some indirect costs um, or ways that you can lower some of those direct costs. So we're, some of the topics are we're going to talk about real quick are housing and dining, which are typically direct costs if you live on campus, but there's ways to lower that money. Entertainment, books, transportations, and not forgetting about other necessities. So housing and dining. If you're going to live on campus, um, you probably know that there are a lot of different housing options. You might be able to live in a single, a double, a triple, um, in a floor with community bathrooms, suite style, apartments. There's a lot of different ways. As a freshman, you might have limited options. Um, as you get older, um, it may be more options. So um, if there's not an on-campus requirement, you might consider living off campus in an apartment with a roommate or two or 10 um, and share your bills, your rent, your electricity, et cetera. So there's different ways that you can try to uh, find a cost-effective way uh, to live. If you live off campus, there are some great ways where you can bundle deals or share things with you know, roommates um, that is more flexible right, than living on campus. But So it's always important to kind of compare and contrast what are the different amenities and the different options? You know, um, living in a dorm that maybe has, again, communal bathrooms or nowhere conditioning could lower your cost, you know, a few thousand dollars even. So as uncomfortable or tough as it may be for one year, it may be worth it to lower your costs. Um, and then dining as well. Um, there's a lot of different levels. Sometimes students are used to eating three meals a day, seven days a week. So they're getting the 21 meal plan. But in reality, in college, you might be sleeping through breakfast or going out to eat for dinner and you're not eating all those uh, meals. So um, take a look at that as well. And then there are times where you could get a job in resident life as a resident advisor or things like that, that you can get free room and board. So if you live in the dorm freshman year and are a model citizen and apply to be at an RA, you might be get that job sophomore year, junior year, and then you're living in the dorm for free. Um, and that's a huge savings. So that's like your job, of course, but still it's a huge saving. So um, look for different opportunities, maybe where you can get a deal on housing or dining. Entertainment is another place where a lot of uh, students spend money, right? You're going to go to college and you're going to want to have fun on the weekends or at night. So um, look for different events that the campus is hosting, right? They're going to have possibly their own movie nights, a bowling alley, sporting events like on campus that a lot of places, all the games are free. Um, other club sponsored activities, residence hall events. These are ways that you can um, do things for fun that are going to really cost you any extra money. Uh, community colleges have these things as well. They have movie nights, they have different events. So take advantage of those. Instead of paying to go to an AMC theater, $15 a ticket, go to the movie on campus that might be free. Um, depending on the community that your school is in, there could be community uh, festivals and fairs as well. So branch out and, and go to some of those things for fun. Um, and then your floor, if you live in a residence hall, there's probably going to be game nights. Maybe you can split different accounts, um, share video game systems, whatever. You can make up your own kind of uh, entertainment that's not going to cost you a ton of money. Books. Books are another huge expense, right? Even with technology today, a lot of colleges still have books. So instead of buying the book brand new from the college bookstore, you might be able to buy used books, rent them, um, look in your library, either public library or school library. Maybe you can borrow it for the time of the, the course. There's sharing programs like iShare. You can buy, of course, online, uh, Chag or Amazon, 
or see if there's a way that you can look on how students are selling their books directly. Maybe there's flyers up in the campus or something like that. So don't just automatically go buy brand new textbooks from the college bookstore. See what other options there are. Uh, maybe you don't even need the book. Maybe you go to class first and the professor says, yeah, it's on there, but it's optional. Then you don't need to buy it. Transportation, right? So if you're going to live on campus, you know, you might be used to having a car, but maybe you don't need one. Maybe they don't even allow you to have one. And if they do, maybe there's a really high parking uh, permit, parking sticker, you know, cost. So um, to have that car on campus, you might need a parking sticker. You got to, you know, keep your insurance. You're going to, you know, want to maintain it still. All that could cost a lot of money. And for what? So that you can drive there in August and then home for Christmas and then, back. you know, if you're only going to use it a couple of times, it may not be worth it, right? So, um, and then if you have to move your car a lot or when you come back, there's no parking space, it could be a real pain. Um, and so definitely ask, like, do I need a car on campus? It might not even be worth it because the cost of keeping it um, just aren't, aren't going to be useful. Most colleges have uh, bus systems and uh, other things as well. If you're thinking I need a car or, or something to go home, definitely plan your trip ahead. If it's an airplane flight, you probably know that the later you wait, the more expensive that flight's going to be. So try to plan ahead. See if you can go off um, high time. So traveling around Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that could be really expensive. If you can go earlier or later, that might help or um, red eye flights. If you're driving somewhere, see who else is from the area um, and carpool with them back. Public transportation, even having a bike around the town your college might be in could be helpful. Uh, use that campus transportation. Most of them, again, have buses to help you get around the campus. And if you're embedded in some kind of town, into the town. If you go to a school uh, in the city like Chicago, all the city schools have the, the CTA pass where you can use the L trains or the buses. So you take advantage of that as well. Finally, don't forget about those other necessities, right? You're not just going to show up on campus with your bags packed and need nothing else the rest of the year. You might need new clothes um, or want new clothes, but you might need them it, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you're going to run out of toiletries at some point. You're going to need new shampoo and deodorant and soap and things like that. You might find you need school supplies, pens, papers, notebooks, etc. Um, you might need just gifts for things, right? If you are going to birthday parties or, um, you know, anniversaries with a significant other, you might want to have some extra money on hand and just anything you might ever need to spend money on. So don't forget about that when you're planning um, if a college is affordable or not. Make sure you have money for those direct costs to pay your tuition bill each month, but also for the other things you might need. So what can you do, right? Money doesn't grow on trees. How can you have some you know, more money. Well, of course you can get a job and there's a lot of ways you can work. Um, if you're eligible, you can work through the federal work study program, which would have been offered to you through FAFSA. So check that with your financial aid office. A lot of universities that do research have um, jobs where you can be a research assistant. So that could be a great way to boost your resume and get paid. Um, you can work off campus. Maybe you already work now at Target or McDonald's or Starbucks. See if you can transfer to the location nearest your campus. Uh, such as, again, working for a chain uh, company or on campus non-work study. Those are uh, oftentimes the best because they know you're a student. So they're flexible with your midterm exa uh, exam schedule or your final exam schedule. Or if you have a group meeting and you get to meet people at school and it's just uh, a fun place to work. And a lot of times you can just be at a desk job, you know, scanning somebody in and getting paid to do your homework or, or things like that. So Definitely um, lots of different options for working uh, where it's not going to take over your whole time, but it's some extra pocket money that you might need. Along with that, you might want to have a budget. And if this is something you haven't done or you forgot it from personal finance or consumer ed, you may want to really look at that. Be thorough. What's all the things I need to spend money on? Um, oftentimes colleges will have these workshops for you. So go attend one, see how that works. Um, see if you're, you know, spending too much money going out with your friends, you know, instead of using that meal plan, I'm like, yeah, let's just order a pizza or let's just go to, um, you know, five guys or something. You're spending all that extra money, um, but you're already paying for it in your meal plan. So you're, you're really, um, losing out there. So budget, 
see how much money you have to spend, see what you're spending your money on and reevaluate it often. Be careful with credit cards too. Now, if you're 18 years old going off to campus, um, that you know, credit card you might be like, oh, I'll just put on the card and worry about it later. Um, be very careful with that. You could find out you're in a lot of trouble um, credit wise and debt. One of the big ways to kind of save money is, um, or not spend more money is to graduate on time. So as I mentioned in one of our other sessions on um, time management, make sure that you aren't uh, dropping classes. Um, same thing with the academic differences. Don't drop classes, seek support, try to stay in the class because if you drop classes, it could push your graduation back and um, that could not be good, right? So graduate on time, see if you can graduate early even, um, and then you're not paying the tuition and the room and board and all that kind of stuff. So those small expenses can add up quickly. You know, a Starbucks here, a pizza there, um, you know, what a concert ticket there, it adds up. And before you know it, you might find, uh oh, I don't have money for the stay in school. And that would not be good. Um, of course, if you're going to borrow money through student loans or through um, credit cards, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Only borrow what is needed. Keep track of school loans um, at various websites. And if you can, pay off any interest while you're in school. It's very important so that you don't graduate with a ton of debt. And I know we kind of mentioned that this was, you know, outside of scholarships, but don't forget about scholarships, right? A lot of times students do it all the local scholarships while they're at, at Hersey, and then they forget about um scholarships while you're in school. So keep searching, keep looking for your department. You're, if you're in the you know College of Business or Nursing or Engineering, um, those small scholarships are worth it. And it's just like we've been telling you now, check with your school, your employer, your church, whoever. Um, there are scholarships for current co college students all the time. And so make sure, again, some action items before we wrap up here. Make sure you look at positions at your school that might provide free or reduced housing or tuition. Um, so the best of both worlds there. You're doing something on campus, um, and it's also a financial benefit. Look for entertainment or other opportunities that are hosted by different schools, uh, organizations, or clubs that you don't have to pay for. And create a budget and stick to it. Um, finally, don't forget that you do need to do the FAFSA every year you are in college if you want to be eligible for any kind of financial aid. Um, October 1st has always been that date. If you're watching this um, before um, you are uh, before the 2023 um, 24 school year where you would have to you know fill out for the 2024-25 FAFSA, it is going through a change. So um, in this, it won't open October 1st, 2023. It's going to open sometime in December for the 24-25 school year. So um, make sure that you're paying attention to those dates and those deadlines. You do not want to miss um, applying for financial aid um, by whatever the state, federal, or school deadline is. So again, money is always a, a tricky part of the college process. I hope I gave you some tips on how to um, save money while you're in school or um, earn money while you're in school or things like that. And so definitely let me know if there's anything I can help you with, but always reach out to your school's financial aid office as well if you have any concerns about paying for school. Thanks.